Good morning, everyone. We are about to start. Hi, good morning. Good morning. We will start now. Senator, the Honorable Paula Gopi Schoon, Minister of Trade and Industry, panelists, participants, members of the media, good morning. I am Simi Suraj, Research Strategist at the Ministry of Trade and Industry, and I would like to welcome you and thank you for joining us today for the Ministry's webinar, Digital Opportunities for SMEs, Pivot Your Business to the Next Level. Even before the pandemic, the Ministry of Trade and Industry recognized the importance and value of e-commerce for our businesses, especially our micro and small businesses. And over the last three years, we have been conducting training seminars as well as, as well as information sessions such as these to encourage and support MSMEs in adopting e-commerce. As we know, COVID has changed e-commerce as we know it, and that change is here to, to stay. We do not even show how it will advance going forward. And while during the pandemic, we saw many businesses adopting a digital agenda to survive we want our businesses to not only survive, but to thrive. And I can assure you that the ministry will continue to work with you to make this happen. A couple housekeeping matters. In the, interest of, for the, in the interest of time, all the questions will be taken at the end. And you can post these questions in, on the chat or the question and answer box. Without further ado, to open today's webinar, we invite Senator the Honorable Paula Gopi School Minister of Trade and Industry, a true advocate for digitization and e-commerce. Minister Gopi Schoon understands the need for digital solutions within business models across all sectors of business. In this regard, she continues to champion and encourage the adoption of digitization within business models to ensure longevity, competitiveness, and continued innovation. Minister. Thank you very much, Simi. And a very good morning to everyone. I'm very pleased to open this morning's e-commerce virtual event, which is one of a, of a series of webinars being offered by the Ministry of Trade and Industry that promotes and encourages firms, especially MSMEs, to incorporate e-commerce into their business models. Today's initiative highlights a number of service providers which are facilitating this move for local businesses and these platforms are providing entrepreneurs with an easy, quick, and reliable access to e-commerce. It is no secret that this COVID-19 pandemic has significantly impacted our way of life and reshaped the economic landscape. Globally, with increased border restrictions, there is a growing trend in, consumers, in consumer buying, more locally made goods and services, and this is all over the world. And this has been facilitated by the emergence of domestic market platforms in many countries, giving rise to a new phenomenon known as digital localism. This trend was validated in a series of worldwide studies undertaken by UNCTAD, focusing on post-pandemic economic recovery, recovery in developing countries, which pointed to notable increases in e-commerce activity within countries. And we are also witnessing this development in Trinidad and Tobago. Since the start of the pandemic, we have noticed a proliferation of domestic e-commerce activity in almost every sector of the economy. And for example, first of the Atlantic Commerce, the main gateway provider, payment gateway provider used in Trinidad and Tobago, experienced an exponential increase in the number of businesses using its platform to facilitate online payments rising from 300 to 500 firms from May 2020 to May 2021. And these figures are even higher when we take into account other e-payment providers, such as WePay, e-solutions offered by banks, and other online marketplaces and platforms. With over 16,000 registered MSMEs in Trinidad and Tobago, this also underscores the significant number of firms that still have not implemented online payments. And this is a, there is a great opportunity for more firms to facilitate this service. 
The value and importance of online platforms provide an avenue for SMEs to go online and avoid the logistical challenges and costs that often serve as a deterrent. These platforms provide a digital space for businesses to not only survive, but thrive and expand their revenue streams and customer bases. There are often inexpensive solutions which allow businesses to set up their e-commerce operations to track customers and improve customer experience and expand the market search, research, both locally and internationally. As digitization increases globally, the government has recognized that businesses require an enabling e-commerce ecosystem to better participate in the digital economy. And this requires a twofold approach in which government creates more effective public policy and businesses implement more adaptive and inclusive business models to facilitate online transactions and e-payments. And to this end, the Ministry of Trade and Industry has been proactively implementing the national e-commerce strategy since 2017. And to date, the Ministry has successfully conducted several training and information sessions on how to go online, how to market goods and services online, and financing options for MSMEs. And this, these have benefited more than 600 businesses. Export TT, the country's national export facilitation organization, which offers a co-financing facility for website development and upgrade, where successful applicants are reimbursed up to 50% of costs. And you have to avail yourself of that. To underscore the importance of the payments to e-commerce, the ministry, together with the Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago, held a webinar on digital payments in February 2021, and over 142 entrepreneurs would, would have benefited by understanding the range of services available to MSMEs by various commercial banks. The government is also doing its part to implement digital payments for e-services via the single electronic window, TTBIS link. And this includes the Trinidad and Tobago Bureau of Standards Inspection and Performance Fees and Export TT Certificate of Origin. In addition, the Ministry of the Attorney General and Legal Affairs and the Judiciary Courts Court Pay System also offer digital payments. When the government met with a cross-section of the private sector last week to discuss various issues affecting the economy, one of the major points was the issue of digitization and the need to facilitate e-commerce for all businesses, especially MSMEs. Today's webinar on digital opportunities represents a continuation of government's commitment to developing e-commerce and building a digital solution. Let me take this opportunity to especially thank the participating firms, Shop Tarib, Quickbox, Planting Seeds, and Shop Hub for partnering with the Ministry of Trade and Industry for this e-commerce initiative. I commend the contribution of each of you for your foresight and vision in recognizing the need for local and regional digital platforms to assist firms to go digital. Further to this, I urge all firms with a desire to go online or for those firms already online wishing to expand to closely examine your business models and consider how these or available platforms can maximize your reach and your profitability. As I close, I wish to recognize everyone for being part of this important event. I am encouraged by the number of participants online and I look forward to the insightful presentations and the stimulating discussions that will follow. I expect that there will be considerable uptake in the business, in the number of businesses using these online trading platforms in the future, as well as the number of available platforms to support such firms as we continue to digitally transform Trinidad and Tobago. I thank you and I wish you a successful webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. We are heartened that we have your full support, and I know we will continue working towards getting this agenda going. Let me introduce the first, pan the first speaker, Mr. Nirvan Benimadu, CEO of QuickBox. Mr. Benimadu is a law graduate of the University of Kent, holding a Bachelor of Laws. 
Following his undergraduate, Nirvan pursued the LPC with the MSc in Law, Business and Management. He also holds the MSc in Entrepreneurship and Innovation from Queen Mary University of London. Whilst in the UK, Nirvan worked part-time in the mobile app development sector. He is now the CEO of Fitbox, mobile application and e-commerce platform which connects consumers to businesses in Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Benny Madhu. Good morning. Thank you, Sami. Senator the Honorable Paula Gopi Spoon, Minister of Trade and Industry, fellow panelists, Ms. Pemberton, Ms. Mirage, Ms. Coltrust, members of the media and participants. Good morning. Firstly, let me say how grateful I am to be part of this, this discussion. Digital opportunities are fast emerging in a world that changes daily. I see e-commerce as a pivotal pillar in bringing Trinidad and Tobago into the 21st century. As we have all come to experience firsthand, e-commerce has quickly become a vital organ in the operations of most operations, irris irrespective of sector. Without a doubt, this has been catalyzed by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, which has radicalized every aspect of our lives. Quickbox, like most of these other platforms that are presenting today, was born out of a need for innovation with a focus on building a reliable and safe bridge between customers and vendors. We are an e-commerce application and fulfillment solution allowing small, medium and large businesses to have a channel to readily sell goods and on the other hand, to provide consumers with an easy to use interface from their smartphone. Regardless of the size of the business, we are keen on working with companies and individuals to digitize and get online easily and quickly. As I mentioned earlier, Quickbox is an e-commerce platform and fulfillment solution, um, which would allow businesses to get products to consumers. I'm hoping that some of you would have already downloaded the app. If not, I will attach the link in the chat so that you may be able to do so. The product seeks to solve problems that exist in the market and provide an A to Z solution for businesses at an affordable cost. We consider Quickbox to be a digital mall at the tip of your fingertips and look forward to customers shopping for everything, it, uh, regardless of you know, whether it's grocery products, hardware items, gifts. We consider ourselves, as I said, to be a digital mall and we have over 110 vendors and we're growing. Um, I believe that it is extremely important to speak about COVID-19 as a catalyst to digitization in Trinidad and Tobago. I know the Honorable Minister mentioned it as well. Um, we have seen several advancements and we, we have seen several businesses, sorry, move towards e-commerce and other technological advancements in a short space of time. Within QuickBox as, as well, we have seen several businesses find merit in utilizing our platform despite earlier reservations and skepticisms that may, they may have had. We have also been able to pivot from the pandemic and have learned tremendously about the market based on initiatives that we have taken, such as our bringing Christmas online promotion, our Mother's Day promotion, and most recently, the launch of our essential store um, to get much needed groceries and medical supplies to people across Trinidad and Tobago. We have been navigating through cha changing times and look forward to pushing forward and innovating, changing the, and innovating through the unforeseen times that we are all being called upon to do. I believe that all the panelists and the government must work expeditiously to chart the way forward for businesses during and after the pandemic. Notably, we have seen many success stories on our platform, especially at this unsettling time. We have stores that have been able to expand from their ambit very widely and service areas that they may not have been able to do before. We see people ordering flowers from Sandy's and West Mall all the way to Point Fortin. We see people ordering perfume from Fifth Sensation, which is a store in San Fernando, all the way to Piaco. So I do think that e-commerce is working. We are slowly digitizing as a people, and also we are happy to be part of the process with businesses to, to walk that, that road, which I think is long, as well as the government. Um, now, I think I wanted to, as we would have been advised, I want to speak a little bit more about QuickBox as a product so that, you know, not to, to bore anyone, but just so you guys have a little bit of an idea about how it works. And um, so I'll just invite you guys to just follow on my slides. Are you guys 
I'm, I'm, I've shared my screen. So I already told you guys, QuickBox is obviously, as you know, an e-commerce platform. So we get products from the vendor to the consumer. As I also had, as I also discussed, we really looked at bringing this product to life when we looked at a real gap in the market. So there are a number of ways that people have done business. So we we have the brick and mortar, which all of us have grown accustomed to. And there are a number of problems or obstacles in continuing to do business in a solely traditional fashion. So we have the dependence on real life traffic then. We've seen the pandemic in, in, in particular has pushed businesses to understand that brick and mortar business is slowly, globally, it's becoming more challenging. There, you know, you have to rely on traffic, the, the, there's high overheads. And we have a, n- a number of other solutions that people may have come up with. So, you know, we have some people that they use social media to do sales. We have people that They've, they, they've decided to create their own websites and some people have even decided to create their own mobile applications. However, we believe that all of these models could be improved by having a centralized shopping hub where people could buy almost anything that they desire. So whether it's food products, because we, we, well, prior to lockdown, we service restaurants, we service groceries, we service gift items. So it's instead of saying, okay, you need to go on a website to order um, flowers and then you have to go on um, a fast food outlet's mobile application to order food or whatever you could order everything on when one place it's similar to it's similar as if you go into a mall you could go to the food courts you can buy from you know the the gift shops you can buy from clothing stores so why quick box in essence we allow um customers through their phone um i'll actually show you guys the app just so you guys can you guys see? So this is the app on my phone. So we have different sex, um, we have different categories, different stores. So you could browse nearby stores. Customers are able to fill their carts, um, search for products. You could search and for store, you could search for products. So it's kind of like we have a dual, dual fold where people could access items. It's also secure online payment and people can schedule their delivery, their collection or their curbside. So we have three options that we allow um, vendors to utilize. Um, Very quickly, I wanted to kind of show you guys how the app works. So you guys have an inkling. I think it's very important if you're going to get your customers to utilize a platform, you have to understand if it's going to be easy for them. Is it going to be challenging? So we try to build a very simple and user-friendly interface. So firstly, it's just to register or create an account. This is what the home screen looks like. So you could see the different categories and you can see stores near to you, search bar, the cart, and then your um, settings are all here, your profile, sorry. Um, A store typically looks like this, where we have all the items and then you can browse based on categories, etc. So it's quite easy to maneuver and it's available both on Android and iOS. Um, then when you've decided what products you'd like to purchase, you just choose when you want to deliver it. If you want it's a curbside pickup, if you want to deliver it, if you want, in- obviously at this point in time, most stores are not able to fulfill curbside or in store unless they are providing essential services. So delivery is typically what is allowed at this time. Um, you can track your order as well. So you know when it, I, I think that it's very important to put power into the consumer's hand and also to put responsibility into our hands. So when we take a product from a consumer, sorry, from a vendor, the customer is notified. So they know that the package has actually left the store. They are aware that it's in our, in our hands and you know, the driver's on the way, et cetera, because I believe that that is very important so that the communication is there and it's open. Um, quickly, I would like to talk about how it works for vendors. So all vendors on QuickBox have access to a panel. So you do not necessarily have to rely on us to say, okay, hey, I want to add 10 new products. I want to change the price on something, or I want to close the store for a week because I'm going on holiday. Not that that's possible at this point in time, but you know, when things reopen, hopefully people, we, we felt that it was important to take the not only the responsibility, but also to put power into the vendor's hands so that they 
they can run their business digitally through our web-based portal. So you have a lot of insights in terms of your customers, your orders, your products. And this is very important in particular because I think that, as you guys know, data is what really drives business and drives success. So having access to this information as opposed to having to compile it yourself is great because you're able to say, okay, you know, we have customers between the age of 35 and 45 shopping in Maraval and they like candles. So you can talk to your digital marketing staff and say, hey, let's run some more ads for candles in Maraval. You also have a good inkling. I mean, for a lot of businesses, the experience that we had is that we went into businesses, even some businesses that I would say were quite sizable and realized that they didn't really have a lot of technology in place. So yes, their sales might be, they would have good sales, but in terms of if you ask them, okay, what is your best selling product? A lot of, some of them may know it at the top of their head, but the, the information is not readily compiled somewhere. And even I'm sure the minister and Simi and everyone else in the ministry would agree that information is super important, even when in analyzing any business, the success of it, information needs to be readily available. So we believe that having this um, panel allows vendors that sort of control and that sort of power in terms of having data compiled for them. Also, everything can be done in terms of uploading of products. It's very, very simple. We don't necessarily need to get involved. Of course, we've understood that digitizing business sometimes is not a very easy process for most people. It, it takes a little bit of time for people to get accustomed. I mean, for all of us, with, with every single thing, we, we are growing more accustomed to technology, but it's not a natural inc inclination. So we are here to help people at every step of the way to say, okay, you need some assistance with this. We're here, we'll help you, we'll show you. So we, we provide training to all our vendors as well so that they can understand how to upload their products and utilize the system efficiently. Um, so just some highlights. I mean, as I mentioned, you obviously have insights into your sales and your customer base. Everything is contactless and virtual. So you don't have to worry about us retaining cash to you, et cetera. It's all, everything is, um, completely contactless, especially with all that's been happening. I think people are more concerned about their safety and their exposure to other people. So this is jumping on board a, a platform is obviously a safer option because you can keep your staff, your staff and your consumers at a safe enough distance. As minister would have clearly indicated E-commerce or jumping onto a platform is not necessarily the only way to do business. It's just one more sales channel. So we look at it as we provide one more stream of you to get business or to get your product to customers. Not necessarily the only, but we want to complement the business that you already, already do. Also, um, joining QuickBox and most e-commerce platforms, I believe, is almost like setting up a new store. It's that you have a virtual store that's being put in place for you and it could all be managed by a lot less staff and less resources. So I think it's an economical way to grow your business without having to put out a large capital investment. And lastly, for a number of businesses, I felt that getting them onto a platform meant giving them a digital identity. So we have a market, we, we, we're rolling out our marketing strategy. And of course, after, I'm sure after some, some of you listen to this, you'll think, well, you know, it's a great idea. Maybe I should launch my own website. Maybe I should do e-commerce on my own. And yes, of course, sometimes it, it sounds extremely appetizing, but I'm sure every panelist here will agree with me that it's not as easy as it seems. It is a lot of work you have to think about building, you have to think about compliance, you have to think about support and marketing, getting people to use it. So we've already laid the infrastructure down for you. So I think it's just an easy way to get your business online quickly. Onboarding is very simple. You just register as a vendor, um, start uploading your stock, and then we're ready to go. The Most importantly, the dollars and cents. Um, QuickBox charges a transactional cost of $2 per transaction. So it doesn't matter the value of it. We still just take $2. 
as well as a monthly service charge of $500 a month. So we do not take any commissions um, from sales and we also do not impose any charges further to the customer. So if you buy something on QuickBox, if you buy this bottle of water for $5, it's $5 plus the delivery fee. We don't charge $5 plus any percentage. Payments, vendors are paid weekly and this is done obviously by, uh, via um, transfer. So just to, um, just to close, I'm really sorry. Um, so we believe that Trinidad and Tobago is ready for digital business. And of course, we're keen on seeing where the future takes us. Trinidad and Tobago undoubtedly needs to be trusted into the 21st century. And we are hopeful to be to be continue to be a part of that. Um, I'm very excited to keep working with the government to fully digitize the economy. And I'm extremely grateful to the Honorable Minister, Ms. Siraj, Mr. Mohammed, and the entire team for taking this initiative to get this conversation started. I look forward to your questions and have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Benimaru. It was indeed an insightful presentation. Thank you. Next, we want Simi? to invite- Yes, Simi, I know, you, I, I know you said questions at the end, but I thought, okay. and I can't stay to the entire thing, um, but I thought that last pres presentation by Nevan was excellent. I just want to ask him a question though. Nevan, you have been on this for, um, for quite a long time, I believe, maybe about two years. How, how long have you been involved in this? In terms of QuickBox, we launched yes. the product actually in December. So just in just oh. before, just well, so we're, we're quite young. We're, we're the new kids on the block. I see. And so how many vendors would you have? We have at the moment 110 and counting. So I think probably about 115, 116. Right. -o. Okay. And I just wanted to, to understand where you are in, in terms of everything. So you're quickly developing. Well, yeah, we, I mean... It, for, for us, it was very important to scale the business properly because, as you know, teething problems are something that every business sometimes has to deal with. And it was important to get certain things, systems sorted, to learn from mistakes before we really expand the business in a more rapid. So we're very comfortable with the development. It's, it's been organic, but it's been really great. Yeah, but know that apart from government, what doing what it can do in terms of in, ensuring that the ecosystem is there, a lot of responsibility would be for you all and um, for, like planting seeds yourselves, etc. And to really bring this home and advertise and get customers yeah. reoriented to the new way of doing business. I can tell you, I'm now trying to convert, but so a lot has to depend on you ensuring that the customer understands more so that you have to, in other words, you have to communicate. Yes, Minister, you have to download the app as well. Make sure you download the app. I'll I have to download I'll be looking out, I'll be looking out to see if I see a purchase from Minister Gopi Skoon. You got it, I'm going to download all of the apps. Right. Okay. Let me not keep you all back, Simi. I have to leave. But if I can come on in, um, intermittently, I'll do that. Thank you, Minister. And Nirvan, she, I'm sure Minister was heartened to hear that flowers go into point 14. <laughs> Very good. I know, Minister, I know Minister, actually, I, I thought about it. I'm like, oh my God, I hope Minister doesn't think I said that because she used to be the MP for point 14. <laughs> it's a true story you could find out from your con former constituents. <laughs> Okay, all the best. And I'm going to come in and on, on and off. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Minister. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. And thank you, Nirvan. So we will now invite Ms. Pemberton, CEO of Plant and Seeds. Stephanie is a businesswoman, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. She graduated with honors in business administration from the Richard Ivey School of Business at the University of Western Ontario. Upon graduation, she gained two years work experience as an investment and credit analyst before leaving the corporate world to pursue her entrepreneurial ventures. She then pursued several successful initiatives before launching Planting Seeds. Through the program, she hopes to revitalize and inspire entrepreneurs in Trinidad and Tobago and throughout the region. Ms. Pemberton. Hello. Hi. Okay, great. So hi, everyone. Um, I'm just going to delve straight into the presentation. I'm sure that you can see I just activated my share screen. 
Um, I think I need to, the other presentation needs to come off first before I can activate mine. I'm so sorry. Okay, great. So Planting Seeds, first of all, is an entrepreneurship development company. Um, the digital marketplace that we have is just one facet of our business, but for the past five years, we've been um, helping entrepreneurs and developing them in terms of getting them access to private equity and funding and business analysis. Um, that's really mostly my background with having a major of finance, and that's basically what we've done over the past few years. We have a few milestones that we've achieved since 2016, which is the successful launch of our television series um, where entrepreneurs interact with, um, with business people in order to get investments. We've also had a series of multiple events um, called our Masters of Industry events, as well as our digital magazine, digital marketplace development workshops and school tours. So in terms of entrepreneurship, we really want the SMEs to not just embrace the digital age, but we assist with all different facets of the business that we see as a holistic approach. Um, this is just some, you know, pictures of the TV show that we have. This is on set and, you know, these are the things that we've done. This is Farm and Function, David and Rachel Rennie. We convinced some investors to invest $250,000 into their product. And they also were an EY Entrepreneur BA winner and their product is now mass distribute, distributed all over Trinidad and Tobago. And we pushed very hard for the private investors to also put back money into the country, into these people, because now Farm and Function is a staple product and it's actually um, doing input substitution for Dole and all of those other frozen food products. So we've had our magazine for the past four years. We try to um, you know, speak about what's relevant in the industry, building sustainable growth, diversification from the oil industry, how to motivate employees, We've also had a series of events that we've had. I mean, now everything has gone digital, but all of the people that have been part of our events um, have played a serious role in helping and developing mentorship for the entrepreneurs. So Michael Legion, um, you know, a Canadian Jamaican billionaire who also had invested in Guardian Life and has a good footing in Trinidad, comes and, you know, mentors our entrepreneurs, helps us. Um, he's very big on entrepreneurship and giving back. So we try to continue working with these types of people to be able to get more resources for the entrepreneurs so that they're not only fully dependent on themselves or the government, but they can get also private people to come in and help them and give them training, resources, funding. This is also Damon John um, from Shark Tank. So they've taken us to New York, mentored us with the programs that we've been doing. Damon John is actually from Trinidad and Tobago and Diego Martin. A lot of people don't know that, but he's actively been um, trying to give back to Trinidad and has been working with us now on a project to be able to try and get more people in the diaspora in New York to be able to have access to local products, which is why it's really good that we have e-commerce platforms now to be able to get those products to them. Of course, we've done you know school tours over the years where we've tried to um, develop the next generation of entrepreneurs, giving them um, information on how to identify gaps in the market. We really believe that the next generation is something that we should never leave behind when moving along with it. So I'll get straight into the digital marketplace. We launched our beta site in March 2020 as a media direct response to COVID. Um, the digital marketplace is obviously an online platform that sells local products to spur economic development and enhance productivity. And our goal is, has been for the past year and a half to digitize SMEs. It was a goal that we actually had before, but most of the entrepreneurs were just so accustomed to pop-up shops and, you know, heading to these, well, the pop-up shops are great and when events open up, that would be amazing, but they only relied on the pop-up shops rather than actually thinking about developing their product to bring it into an online system and then getting it to export. So the pop-up shops gave them money right in the now, um, which kind of held them back from thinking about the future. So we saw the, you know, this COVID response um, taking something negative that's happened. And, you know, COVID is a terrible thing. We obviously do not, um, you know, want it to continue, but it is trying to make the best out of it. And this has brought digitization to the forefront. So we're making sure to take that opportunity and push it towards the entrepreneurs. 
Um, right after we launched, we had just over 300 SMEs um, on our platform. Now we have 400 and we have another pipeline of 500 that we are now onboarding with our new site upgrades. So in about a month, we'll have about a thousand SMEs all inducted onto the site. This is what website sales was like when we first started. I show this spreadsheet to show the incremental growth and in how it is done. So we moved from 9,000 US in May a month to December being 95,000 US. And now we're doing just over 150,000 US every month in sales for entrepreneurs. So we actually feel as though it's been such a good progression and trajectory and we want to continue doing that. Um, our site is actually not just going to be an e-commerce type Amazon platform, but we've also been working with Aegis Business Solutions to ensure that it has an accounting backend for entrepreneurs. A big problem with entrepreneurs not being able to cost and price out their goods and being economically or internationally competitive um, is a problem with their accounting that we want to solve. We're also going to be digitizing our events. So in the past, where we've had people like Michael Leachin and Damon John and all of these people basically um, coming in and mentoring, we're going to have a mentor algorithm app that continues to do that with digitization instead of the actual events. And obviously working with their supply chain management and grouping people together. So we found that because we've been able to get so many entrepreneurs together on the site, we've been able to purchase things for them at cheaper prices. So for instance, right now people can get, instead of ordering 10 um, packages, they can order as a group and benefit from economies of scale, which is now gonna be able to help them become more internationally competitive as, as well. So this is basically, I'll get into the website, but I like to show people what our strategic goal and vision is so that they can understand um, what it is that we're trying to create. A lot of people come into the market and say, I'm gonna do this for SMEs or do that for SMEs. And, that's all great, but what we want to make sure is that they actually get the benefits that we're putting out there. And um, that's something that needs to be developed over time. And it's something that we've been actively doing for five years. I'm sure a lot of you all have been doing that as well, which is great. Um, so our first goal was to create the network, which is what we did with our TV series, magazine, business network events, and with the digital marketplace. Now we are on the stage. This is our strategy house. We're on the stage of the second side where we're now organizing and helping with their financials, working with their supply chain and developing the network. Then after the, de the network is actually developed, that's when you can start extracting value from the network, doing sales commissions, helping them with marketing campaigns, distribution channeling. But we're definitely not there yet. We reach still at our developing network stage because we want these people to be able to actively make money before we take any kind of sales commissions or anything like that. So we have such great businesses that we've been working with that have gone from little minimal sales to a lot more, but they still don't have their trademarks in place. They still don't have their financials done. They still don't have a lot of the business operational flows that are needed so that when we launch an international campaign, if somebody orders a thousand products from them, they may not be able to supply because their business hasn't been organized to do so. This is basically our ex execution timeline for our new site upgrade that we've had. You don't have to include the prices. That's the funds that we had to raise to do this the new web website upgrade. Um, but we're gonna, I'll show you a little bit about the new look. Um, the new look is really supposed to be have, have it as a more international feel so that we're able to actively get the international market and have them rely on Trinidad and Tobago's website. Um, in 2020, we won the Chamber of Commerce Award um, for the digital marketplace. And we've also seen a great need for help in Tobago. So right now we have an operation in Tobago. Uh, Tobago entrepreneurs are so, uh, amazing. They are great at graphics, they're great at design, they have their products ready. And a big problem was is getting the goods in between Trinidad and Tobago. People felt as though they couldn't do it. So with our platform, it doesn't matter if you're in Trinidad or Tobago, you still get free delivery in between the two countries. Well, two, not even countries, islands um, that are as one so that we don't, people don't have a feeling that products will be more expensive if they buy a Tobagonian product. Or Tobagonians feel don't, you know, don't feel like it will be more expensive if they buy from a Trinidadian product. And we've actually been able to really help this trade and kind of work with people on that. We also have a cold storage distribution and we've um, connected with DHL. I know a lot of you might have done that as well, where you can now um, help the entrepreneurs to do their international orders and deliveries. We prepare all of the airway bills and everything that needs to be sent out. 
Um, and that's basically where we are in terms of the platform. In terms of the service itself, we've also recently acquired shares in PinkCab. So PinkCab is a, another, um, another um, technology-based company, except it empowers women and it only hires female drivers. So with the, we're doing about 2,000 deliveries a day now. And with this new collaboration with PinkCab, we have been able to expand the level and the swiftness in which we're able to do deliveries. All of the deliveries are done by us and we execute them between Trinidad and Tobago. Um, same kind of thing, we don't take commissions on, on, on products and we get them to and from the customer. They all get their individual drivers. Everybody is um, prepped for you know COVID restrictions and COVID response and all of the drivers have been all trained. And you know this is also a great, new partnership for us that we're proud of because it's also taking another technology company that can also expand in Barbados. So our next step is moving with PinkCab in Barbados to be able to offer that, um, offer that product and service where we have not only regular drivers that come in under our umbrella, but empowering female drivers and being able to allow them to get job opportunities in a time where jobs are really, really needed. So it's been pretty amazing as a female entrepreneur. It's been so nice working with like all of these ladies now with PinkCab. So um, it's been really good. Normally I have to work with all the men and you know, so it's, it's great to have just this. And women are so organized. I just have to say, they get in those packages. Oh, they're ticking off. I mean, it's really good. So we have, you know, a couple of hundred people um, on the PinkCab side and, and we've been able to create really good employment there and we're really happy about it. Um, this is just a sneak peek of what the new site is going to look like. We've taken a more um, technology oriented approach because we're trying to really actively captivate that international market. And this is what they're accustomed to. So with the new site upgrade, it'll have obviously all the other features that I just spoke to you about. And we're now transitioning our vendors onto this new one. It also has the ability for them to connect with international distributors. And we also do a lot of distribution to grocery stores. So the small businesses that give trips to grocery stores, it's normally really expensive for them, but through planting seed, we've been able to make it much cheaper and together, you know, they pool together resources and then we send them out to panel vans and do our weekly grocery runs. So we've been able to reduce the cost to the SME for distri distributions and grocery stores. And hopefully with the new sites, we will now be able to increase the distribution internationally as well for the entrepreneurs. Um, so that's basically about it. I mean, we have, um, it's very easy to sign up for, for planting seeds. We have a subscription of $400. Um, again, free delivery nationwide. We've been delivering through the entire country. I mean, I never knew this, the country as much as I did now. Like I knew how to get all the way from Maruga to Labre to Princess Town. We've zoned it all out. We're going to Toko. Um, you know, even though it's more expensive for us to do these rides and people are like, why do you all do free delivery? We think it's important because when you're delivering to Toko, you might have, we started off doing Toko with one or two deliveries and it was a long track, long organization to do it. But now we have 20, 30 deliveries to, be, to do in Toko. And now we've been able to develop that area and we're actually getting entrepreneurs from Toku wanting to get digitized and be on the platform. So um, that's really about it. I mean, I'm sure I share a lot of the, you know, the regular pains of, of getting customers accustomed to the delivery service and what it's like and, you know, getting their delivery notices, scheduling with a driver. We're not living in the US, so you can just leave a package outside someone's door. Um, so that's something that we are trying to kind of get around by being able to give the customers direct contact with all of our drivers who all directly work for us and are vetted. So that's basically about it. If you guys have any other questions, um, feel free to ask. Uh, so Simi, can I just interrupt a little bit? Do you mind? Sure, Mr. Yes. Just very quickly, and I, I, I have to move on. So I thought that was an excellent presentation um, by, by Stephanie. And um, what is good is that she has established an entire entrepreneurial ecosystem. And I think that, that, that gives her a stronger push. 
uh, I think they have got, gone through exponential growth. It's fantastic to grow. And I suppose this is where Navin wants to go to, to grow. Uh, she says she's onboarding close to a thousand customers, but in doing so and doing so very quickly and growing exponentially, you just have to be very careful about your efficiency levels and your customer experiences, making sure that they're top notch in that you don't lose anything whilst you're growing so very quickly. Fabulous that you've gone into Tobago. Um, yes, because we have the administrative trade and industries doing some work there with Export TT. Export TT is on the ground there working with the THA. And we know that there are a number of customers there with very unique um, products. And that's what is going to differentiate those, those people in Tobago. Their products are totally, totally different from what you can get in Trinidad and Tobago. So in Trinidad, sorry. So I thought that was a good idea to get into that niche market and, um, and really help them to develop their products, but also help us to have access to those Tobago products too. So Stephanie, that was excellent. I'm going to listen a little bit to the next um, speak, the next, um, uh, speak up, but I'm not going to be able to comment after because I only have five minutes. So thank you, Simi. Okay, thank you, Minister. Thank you, Stephanie. And now I would like to introduce Ms. Rana Maraj. Ms. Maraj's passion is a passionate marketing entrepreneur. She received her BSc in Marketing Management with honors from Anglia Ruskin University, London in 2007, and an international master's degree in Business Administration with a specialization in international marketing from the Arthur Lockjack Graduate School of Business in 2010. Rowana launched ShopHub, whereby local, regional, and international vendors and customers can trade online. She spearheaded this project from inception and hopes to become a household name within the Caricom Islands and in the near future. Rana. Hi everyone, um, thank you uh, for allowing me to be on this panel. Um, the Honorable Ms. Go Ms. Paula Gopi Schoon, Ministry of Trade, um, all the panelists, uh, all the participants, members of the media, um, thank you for giving us again the opportunity to, to showcase our products, the showcase of you know the, the services that we offer because I'm realizing that a lot of entrepreneurs are not familiar with what is out there, what is available to them, you know, the different um, e-commerce platforms that are available, you know, and they, they're looking, they're trying to open their own e-commerce platform, e-commerce websites, and then they're realizing they may not know the technological know-how um, to actually, you know, set up their website, um, set up the, the online payment system, set up their delivery system. So, you know, these platforms, similar to what I have, as well as the other panelists, has, you know, pivoted the e-commerce industry and allowing entrepreneurs to, to go online and, you know, to create that online presence, especially during these times when we have no choice but to be at home. We, you know, the minister, the government is, is trying the utmost best to curb what is going on, you know, with this, this pandemic. And we now as entrepreneurs have to be able to pivot in the industry and say, okay, what can we do to work around this, 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 work in this new current environment? This is a new norm. And I'm not sure how long this is gonna last, but a lot of entrepreneurs are now getting you know, into the e-commerce industry and now trying to figure out, okay, how can I be in, in, in online and, and not just use social media? You know, How can I incorporate the online payment system? How can I incorporate the delivery system and make it a, and, you know, encompass that online experience for their customers? So, Nirvan and Stephanie and all of them would have, you know, went in a lot of detail with, you know, the need for e-commerce. And I don't think I want to go into that again because I may, um, they, they, they captured it really well in terms of why we need e-commerce in the industry. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to dive in to um, shop up what we do, what we're about. And let me see if I can share my screen. There we go. Um, are you all able to see? Yeah. Okay. So normally when I meet with entrepreneurs, um, because I'm I'm I am heavily involved in the business and I build this from scratch. This is my baby. And I normally I go up with all my sales reps, you know, to meet with entrepreneurs and get them on board to the website. And normally there are five top questions that entrepreneurs will ask me. And it's okay first tell me about shopper what do you do what are you about you know how does it work how much is this thing going to cost me because i'm a young entrepreneur i'm now starting up how much is this going to cost me 
how do I register and why do I register with Shopper? Because you know there are a number of different platforms, as you can see. Um, why do I register with Shopper? So what I want to do, I want to answer those questions, you know, um, as detailed as possible. So at least you get all the information about the platform and what we could do, you know, at a, at a glance. So the first question, tell me about ShopHub. Uh, ShopHub, similar to the other panelists, we are e-commerce marketplace where vendors and consumers can buy and sell online. We do a wide um, category, range of categories, you know, anything, once it's legal, we sell it. Products, services, we do wholesale and retail. Wholesale vendors have the opportunity to set up their wholesale platform so you can do beat business to business transactions as well. You can do retail for normal retail entrepreneurs. Um, we ship, you can, customers can, you know, come online, they can shop from different vendors, make an informed decision. So that no longer you have to go walk in through the malls to find a product, to find a gift, find a Christmas gift, Mother's Day gift and whatnot. You can go online, see like 10 or 20 different vendors who sell the same product be able to compare, do the price comparison, product comparison, make an informed decision. So essentially, as similar to the other platforms, we're a marketplace, we're an online mall, as you as you would have called it, where you can shop online and, and select the products um, that you, you're most interested in. Second question is, how does it work? So I want to take it from two angles, one from the vendor's end and one from the customer's end. So it's very simple for the vendor. You can register online, go on the, web, the homepage of the website, register online, and you are approved immediately. You can start selling today. You register and you start selling online immediately. Um, once that happens, you're redirected to your vendor dashboard. It's automatically created, and you can begin uploading your products. If as I mentioned before, some vendors may not know, or may not have the technical know-how as to how to upload the products. We offer free training to all vendors so that they can, you know, use, fully utilize the platform with all the different features that we have on the site. Uh, vendors can upload and download their products to the website. We provide as well a microsite page, which is your home page on the main website where you can showcase, you can customize that page to show all the products and services you're selling, put up your advertising, put up your banners onto the website, and you can share that specific URL to your customers on your social media, you know, on your, your, your advertising or whatnot, so customers can go directly to your page and shop for your products. Um, Vendors has the option to sell either retail or wholesale on the platform. Uh, in terms of the customer's end, how it works again customers i mean this is not new to the industry we i normally say that we are playing catch up e-commerce is has been done internationally for years now amazon has been out years now so trinidad and tobago has over the past two years been playing catch up since i think i think it mainly started when first atlantic commerce developed in the caribbean caribbean where we were you know, allowed to have this um, payment portal where customers can pay online. So no longer you have to use you know, um, your pay with cash or, or PayPal or any of the, you know, the international platforms, but now we have First Atlantic Commerce. So that I think is what pivoted the industry into you know, going fully into the e-commerce uh, avenue. Um, so customers, yes, standard with e-commerce platforms, you can search, um, by normal search engine, um, search bar, or they can search by the vendors. Um, customers uh, can get their products delivered to their front door. With the delivery system, we have, unlike um, the other two panelists, we don't personally do our own delivery. We do have three different companies that handle our deliveries for us because we said, okay, let the experts do what the expertise you know into the deliveries are so we use universal packaging systems one we use a company called sped um, these two companies handle our domestic deliveries within trinidad and tobago and we use dhl for our international deliveries so yes we do ship worldwide and that industry has been growing exponentially and we have had a lot of international sales and a lot of uh, persons who are in the US, trainees who are in the US, you know, in, in, in Canada, in the UK and whatnot, um, in, in 
in Asian countries are shopping online for some of our local products because we do have a lot of young entrepreneurs, or, you know, a lot of products that we manufacture in Trinidad and Tobago that, you know, the outside, the international community are looking for. So DHL has um, assisted us uh, fully with getting the products on that international scale and, and creating that international brand for us. Uh, all deliveries are calculated, automatically calculated on the website. So it's automated whereby once a customer plugs in where it's being delivered to, we are integrated with these delivery systems and the API. So it's automatically calculated on the website. Uh, once the product is purchased on the website, our couriers will pick up from the vendors and deliver to the customers. So, right. So that's in terms of the delivery. In terms of the customer payments, the customer, when the customer shops online, they have the option, three different options to pay. Uh, they can pay via Visa, MasterCard, once it's branded debit and credit cards. Um, they can pay via cash links or check on delivery. They can do online money transfers. So we also have PayPal as well on the website. Um, so the customer has a lot of options where they can you know, pay. Um, if they don't have a credit card, you can pay with your Visa debit card. If you don't have a Visa debit card, you can pay with your normal links card when, you, when we deliver. You can pay with your cash. You can pay with a, a check when we, when we deliver. We can do online payments, ACH transfer payments. So we try to encompass a lot of different options for the customer so that they can they are able to purchase from your vendor, our vendors easily, much more easier, because that was one of the key concerns that we were having with, um, with online shopping, because not all um, consumers have uh, credit cards. So we try to allow or give them the opportunity to, you know, pay with different facilities. Uh, so that in terms of, you know, how how the the trend of thought with the entire platform works from the vendors end and from the consumers end. The third big question that I normally get is how much is this going to cost me? And I'm going to say the four letter words that I know that people want to hear. It's free. We do not have a registration cost. We do not have a setup cost. If I'm a vendor and I want to register to shop up, I want to create an e-commerce platform, you can register on your website. You are approved immediately. You can start uploading your products today and you can start selling products online today. There's no cost involved in registering to the platform. So you can have your e-commerce platform set up for free. One of the reasons we did this is because of COVID. We have a lot of entrepreneurs who are, you know, they're going out of business. It's, it's scary to say, but they are going out of business. And we have to work with our entrepreneurs, with our, you know, vendors to help them stay in business, to help them, you know, pivot and to help them, okay, look and see for different avenues to how can we stay in business? How can we get our products to our customers without breaking any of, you know, the, the COVID regulations and whatnot? How can we do this legally? How can we get the products to our customers via, you know, a proper delivery system um, and, and authorized delivery systems and which we have all of this. How can we get our monies um, online, and uh, whether it's online or whether it's cash, how can we, you know, and get our business online, create the online presence? And we decided, okay, yes, this is how we can do it. This is how we can work with our vendors and we can offer it for free. You can set up your platform. Again, there's no cost. How it works is on commission. So we're a little different from how from the two other platforms whereby they have, um, I think it was a registration fee and, and there's no commission, where they reverse. So that's no registration cost, but there is a commission structure. So how the commission structure works, we have different packages. Um, we do have um, paid packages if you want lower commission structures, but with the free package, it carries a 10% commission structure. And if a customer pays with credit cards or whatnot, there is a normal bank fees, which are 2.75% and a transaction fee of 5%. I mean, sorry, 25 cents US. Um, and we do have paid packages where you can get lower commission structures, which a lot of bigger companies would take because they would see the, the volume of sales that are happening through the site and it's, it's, it's easier for them. It's, it's, it's um, you know, it's for these lower commission structures where they can afford to pay the 
registration prices. But we know we have from, from our surveys and whatnot, a lot of business owners, they don't have that monthly fee to, you know, they may not, especially during this time. So that's why we decided to create this free package. And it's doing pretty well in terms of um, entrepreneurs, you know, to get them on board and to give them that online platform, where, which they, they absolutely need at this point in time. The fourth question we have is, we get is how do we register on this website? And it's very simple. Um, you go on the main homepage of the website, you fill out the application form. Normally, if you go onto the website, you'll see the vendor registration tab to the top left. You click on that, you'll get a registration form. You fill that out, you fill out your banking information and whatnot, and you are automatically registered. It then takes you to your dashboard and you could begin uploading to the website. So it's, it's very simple. It's no higher mathematics. You can do that in, in, in five minutes if that much and you're online selling. The fifth question we normally get is why sell with us? And one of the things that I would tell customers is yes, we are one of, I, I think Nirvan mentioned this, we are one of the avenues that you can utilize um, for online e-commerce platforms. And I normally tell vendors to create an, like, okay, so how Google works, um, they would send out, like if a customer types in, okay, I'm looking for a laptop. How Google would work, they will send out crawlers, something you call crawlers, and they would look for the most platforms that this name is synonymous with. So say for instance, um, I have uh, e uh, electronic store and I register with five different platforms. I, uh, I'm registered with um, QuickBox, I'm registered with ShopHub, I'm registered with ShopKaribe, I'm registered with, um, with uh, the other one, planting seeds, um, and you have your social media platforms. Google now will identify, hey, this is a reputable business. They register with these five different platforms People are shopping online, they recognize, and they will bring your website to number one on Google Listen. And I would normally tell vendors, it's not just one platform you have to register with, you have to register with everybody. Create those different avenues for sale. And this could only benefit a business owner because you have now five different avenues for sales to come in. So think of it like you have five different outlets one in South, one in you know, San Fernando, one in Port of Spain, one in the East, one in every, you know, wherever. You have five different outlets, but it's online. And you have five different avenues to bring in revenue. So this can only benefit an entrepreneur for, you know, multiple avenues to bring in revenue from. So what I want to just go in quickly is why do you register with us? One, it's free. So they have nothing to lose. It's free, you can go on site now register you set up your online platform and it's no cost no cost to any any young entrepreneur who's coming out of school and have some products that they want to sell they can go onto the website and upload and they can start their business um and i've seen a lot of that happening a young persons who, who are out of school or some may be still be in school they register their business and they come on the website and and they start selling and they do pretty they do really well in terms of you know getting their, their online presence and selling their products and having that avenue for business to shop with them and creating. Because what happens is that you not only have your target market within, say I'm in Port of Spain and I just have a retail outlet in Port of Spain, your target market reaches the entire of Trinidad and Tobago and worldwide with our platform. It's Trinidad and Tobago, throughout the Caribbean, throughout internationally we ship worldwide we have our search engines advertising worldwide so you can get those international customers you don't have to be confined to port of spain or trinidad or tobago you can sell your products internationally and that is one of the main benefits major benefits and it's you know of, of registering with this free platform uh vendors have a microsite as i think i was mentioning this to you so it's like a smaller e-commerce platform within the major website of shop Hub. we offer free training um, to our vendors to upload and download the products 
you get free advertising on our homepage um, of the website. You can get free, you can advertise on our featured products, sales deals, weekly deals on the homepage of the website. You can take advantage of our extensive marketing campaign um, with, you know, digital marketing, you know, we do promotion and promotions on our social media, TV, radio, press, YouTube videos. Um, we have multiple payment options for customers. So I know a lot of customers will, as I said, do not have the opportunity to, with a, do not have a credit card, but they can pay with the different um, features that we have available. We have automated delivery systems, a built-in delivery system. Uh, so you don't have, as a vendor, you don't have to actually deliver the products yourselves. You can um, utilize our delivery systems. We have an integrated banking system. We our bank we bank with First Citizens Bank, who are who I would recommend to anybody, First Citizens, any person who's getting into e-commerce, any young entrepreneur who's setting up their own business, First Citizens Bank, in my experience, has been one of the top-notch banks out there who are spearheading the e-commerce industry, the e-commerce environment for online payments. And they work well with you. They, they help you every step of the way. So if, even if you don't want to come onto a platform like ours and you want to create your own website, I would recommend to anybody, First Citizens is your way to go. Um, they, as I said, they're very user friendly. They, they work with you every step of the way. Their fees are low. They, they work with young entrepreneurs and they understand the environment we're in and, and they, they help you go get, achieve that, what they were trying to get. Um, right, so the other point, we, our products are insured up to $500 per item. So say for instance, because we're handling your products for you, we have automatic insurance with, the, the products that, that kicks in once we collect the products from our vendors. So once you pick up that product, your, your product is automatically insured up to $500 per item once we're delivering. So if anything happens, we will cover it up to $500. If you want also, you can increase, if you, I know some vendors do have a little more expensive products, you can increase that insurance amount, um, but we have an automatic valued insurance at 500 per item. Uh, we do have online tracking. We ship worldwide. Um, we are entering the regional market. Um, as soon as the borders open back up, we're going to be entering our first island is as well Barbados, as um, I think uh, Planting Seas were mentioning. Um, they are also launching Barbados, and we are going to start adding islands as we go on. And we are launching our mobile app in 2021. Within the next couple of months, we should be launching a mobile app to make the platform a little more user friendly, you know, with your phones and whatnot, um, to, to, to shop online for vendors as well, um, to upload their products onto the platform. So I think essentially I kind of uh, encompass, you know, how, how the platform works, um, how we get the, the products uh, from the vendors to the customers. And I believe that, um, that vendors, as I said initially, that vendors are now looking uh, and, and are eagerly looking to, to wait for ways to go online. And I think now is the time and now is the, the industry is changing and e-commerce is, is the way to go. Uh, you're seeing a lot of companies, as you can see, we have uh, four different panelists um, online with us right now. And I'm sure there are a lot more e-commerce marketplaces that, you know, other than the four of us who are, who are here right now who are doing similar. So, you know, it's this avenues now that where customers and vendors, you know, look to, to go online and it's a great opportunity. Um, so I think that is it for me in terms of, you know, what we do. And um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know. Thank you very much, Rana. We do have a couple of questions for you, but sure. um, we'll take them at the end. Um, sure. We'll just have time. Sure. So now I would like to invite Ms. Roxanne Coltras. Roxanne Coltras is a digital entrepreneur who has been involved in communications, animation, tourism, and e-commerce. Over the last 20 years, she has witnessed the growth and development of digital economies with strategy level involvement in the animation sector as a co-director to the Anime Caribe Festival. 
In 2016, she partnered with husband and co-director Philip Poultras to develop the tourism booking platform Destination Trinidad and Tobago, which has amassed more than 500,000 visitors per year. In 2020, she became the managing director of ShopCarib.com, the ultimate marketplace for Caribbean-made products with more than 150 vendors and 2,000 products. Ms. Poultras? Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me on the on the panel this morning. I know maybe maybe minister has gone, but certainly you know for the Ministry of Trade to lead this kind of initiative, it is it is so validating. It is so interesting that you know a ministry could take this role to try to digitize the sector. Yes, one, but to play and place this focus on SMSEs. I'm, I'm putting the S. I realize you left it off in terms of just medium, but really it's about an entire initiative. It's an entire cultivation of entrepreneurship in the region. And I'm so impressed about that. In fact, my panelists, wow, 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 wow. A phenomenal group of people who are risk takers. That's what you've done. You've taken a risk that is just phenomenal. I, I, I congratulate you, each, each of you, on the steps that you've taken, um, the, the motivate. I mean, you have to be so self-motivated and so self-driven to get into something like this. So to tell you a little bit about Shopkari, we are, um, our focus is Caribbean-made products, the best Caribbean-made products. We're an e-commerce platform, and our focus is on art, craft, home, beauty products, jewelry, and fashion. Some core areas, making them available for sale locally and internationally at the click of a button. Some of the key things for us are that we have, yes, worldwide shipping, just as our other panelists, and DHL, I wanna make a special note about DHL. They have really stood up and come into the, fill the gap, allowing us to get these products out there internationally. We have a rate that actually starts around 1995 US. Now, some of the, of course, some of the larger e-commerce platforms worldwide do what? Free delivery. We'll get there, right? Once we get our numbers up, we'll get there, don't worry. But this is where we're at right now. DHL has come in as a partner to Shokarib and we are, we can start delivering things from 1995 US. Similar to our, our other panelists, we have fast delivery throughout Trinidad and Tobago. And our focus area again, Caribbean made items. So I'm Roxanne and my background, you heard it from the bio, takes us through uh, animation, tourism, communications, marketing, PR. But one of the key things to me has been my love for artisan made products. I think that that is the key to it all. And when we started doing our research to see how many um, small and medium sized entrepreneurs they were doing handcrafted, handmade things in the Caribbean, we were blown. We were, my mind was blown in terms of how many people were out there doing these intricate, um, authentic handmade things. And this is from fashion, art, craft, jewelry, candles, you name it. So we wanted to give that area a focus. My partner, business partner, and, and in, in private as well, my husband of 22 years, Philip is actually on the technology side. He is the, he understands the backbone of the web development and the, the e-commerce side. He is actually, and together, both with backgrounds in economics and um, innovation and entrepreneurship, we see that there, this is, this is the group of people who will turn this economy around. You know, we keep hearing the different advisors out there talking about how the economies are slowing. We keep hearing, okay, our oil and gas money is running out. So what are we turning to? And for us, we think we need to turn towards the entrepreneurs, turn towards those persons who are by their by the, 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 the sweat on their brow, by their efforts every day, are making things happen. They are creating. And so I wanted to give you all a glimpse of some of the vendors who are on Shopkarib right now. 
Um, it's, a, it's a wide list. We have more than 150 vendors, but we're talking about authentic Caribbean made things. It's fashion. It is uh, candles and even Galt and Marie and even our other candle makers, they do things that are um, in the essence of it all, it's, it's, it's Trinbigonian, it's Caribbean. Um, Galt and Marie has a piece called um, Savannah Lime, right? I mean, who wouldn't give for a little Savannah Lime right now? But what it is, it is, it is infusing in their products, all of them infuse in their products and their designs that Caribbean-ness, that thing that is going to make our products separate and apart from the rest of the world. Some of our, our stats, some of our data, more than 150 vendors registered with more than 2,000 products online. Our website traffic since the launch in June 2020, and that's the, that was the height of the, the pandemic worldwide. We decided to launch. Uh, we've had 185,000 visitors to the website. And we've been looking at key things. Now, this number may, you know, compared to some of the other panelists, um, I wanted to I pull this in specifically to let you know that for that small and micro entrepreneur or that medium sized entrepreneur who sells a necklace or you know handmade earrings, um, having someone buy their products and coming up to uh, 105 US is about 700 TT. Buy $700 worth of their product is like, whoa, right? So. We've had things like that. We have shipped to countries like Italy. Um, just this, just today, we, we, have, we have another package going out to Italy. Australia, UK, Guyana, Jamaica, Barbados, USA, and of course, Canada. We do paid promotions to drive customers to the website. And this has resulted in an increase of 88% on items purchased. And of course, we do promotional campaigns for Christmas, Black Friday, Valentine's, Mother's Day, et cetera. Very, very critical for us. And how does the vendor benefit? The vendor benefits from access to international markets. So their foreign customers can see, see and, and I'll tell you from our stats, seeing the things we have people who visit items three or four times before they actually buy it. So seeing the item, flipping through the images, flipping through reviews. It's very, very important for our international customers and then they purchase. So similar to our colleagues on the panel, yes, we accept credit card payments um, via First, Atl First Caribbean online credit card facility. And that is of course managed through First Atlantic Commerce. So you're talking about a lot of layers of security when people put their banking information in. We provide our, our vendors with international and a local delivery system as well. And what this does is that it, it alleviates the burden and the costs associated with having to source the capital to achieve your own website. Yes, critical, critical for us. We, our vendors benefit from collaborative marketing. Collaborative marketing and, and promotions has allowed even the smallest vendor to sell their products abroad. Critical for us, it is that, yes, it's the local sales, fabulous, but it's also about getting your products abroad. Access to wider markets, access to revenue generation. It's even providing export opportunities for entrepreneurs. And it's a, and even this, this element of people being able to buy from multiple vendors, that is critical for us. Because what it does, it means that Someone can put an entire outfit together. They can buy a dress, they can buy a necklace, they can buy a handbag, all in one place. And that for us, it has uh, showcased the multiplier effect of what we're doing for the website. So our customers benefit from having access to unique and well-crafted Caribbean products, fast delivery using international courier DHL, easy payment via First Citizens Online Credit Card Facility, as well, we've actually added, we pay into our system because of the kind of work that they've been doing. Tremendous work, um, easy for, for 
vendors to set up their own accounts with them as well if you're having challenges with the other banking institutions. So that's been a great option for us. I just wanted to show you some of the key features on Shopery. So our vendors get their separate mini e-store. Each vendor gets it. And this is a sample of what your, you actually get your own oil. So you can um, use it in your social media promotions. You can use it in your, your link on Instagram, you know, link to your shop. You can print it on call cards if we ever get back there, right? But you can use it so that directs people straight to you. It's the ability to customize your storefront with banners, logos, size charts, and other store information. We provide a simplified checkout process to streamline purchases. We, in terms of the use as use use of the site, um, we also there's also an allowance of product and vendor reviews, and there's a comprehensive search option to allow filtering. So you know when you you come and you so you know we have um, customers when you when we look at the analytics you know, on the site at all sorts of hours, right? All sorts of hours through the night, through the day, whatever. And they're looking, they're using that filter button. They're able to filter through items. I wanna just see dresses. I just wanna see lifestyle. I just wanna see candles. Or they're even using the filter to say price tag. I, I wanna send a gift. And that gift needs to be about 50 US, 10 US, whatever, they can find it. So, um, you know, this is an element that um, is worldwide. People want to know if it's mobile ready. And so, yes, websites now have to be mobile ready, flexible, so that customers can browse and make purchases while on the go, regardless of what device they're on, laptop, tablet, you name it. And we've noticed actually 86% of our customers use their phones to search and order and pay online. So that's an interesting element for us. The Shopkari platform is e-commerce ready. It allows international and regional payment methods. The system can also calculate shipping costs based on location attributes, similar to my colleagues. It also allows vendors to offer coupons and set sale prices or discounts on products. So as we, I mentioned earlier that we do quite a lot of promotions. And so we've been able to, engage our vendors so that we can actually have discounts and coupons and that we then work together to showcase to customers. So Shopery provides our e-stores e e with e-commerce capacity and readiness, logistics and courier service, international delivery systems, opportunities for entrepreneur development through workshops and developmental sessions. So let me, let me clarify this a little more. These, so our e-stores, we know that people are at varying levels, varying levels of development, varying levels along that path of, of entrepreneurship. And so we work with, with them to identify, okay, so maybe your photos need to be better. Maybe we can, you know, maybe we can guide you or maybe we can um, set up a photo shoot where we actually take the photos. So that's the developmental process we're talking about. On the back end, we have a fully functional dashboard um, knowledge base that has a lot of um, videos and, and um, presentations on how to do things, from how to set up your e-store straight on through to articles on um, using your photos, you know, what type of photos to use on your, on your store. You know, you name it, it's there. So it can guide you through fairly quickly. So I put this section in because what do we, where do we need the support from a Ministry of Trade and Industry? What do we need? And what we're seeing after, in fact, June is a year since we've been operational with Shopery. We'd been planning it for about eight months before, but when the pandemic happened, we said, you know what, let's go. Let's give our entrepreneurs a chance to be online. But one of the key things that we're seeing is that in when our products head out to other jurisdictions, there are taxes that are applied. 
And so we've been um, writing you know, proposal papers to different organizations to have this particular thing done, that there's no tax on TNT handmade exports, which are destined for personal use. I think this is critical because just think about it. If, we, if, some, if a vendor is selling um, through their e-store and shop parade, a necklace that costs 50 US, but when it gets to another country, they, they're charged uh, taxes of 25 US. What that does is that it just totally increases the overall cost of the product. And so the, the customer may buy it this time, they may pay the tax rate this time, but it's gonna reduce their willingness to come back and shop. And so we need the support at ministry level to make this happen. We're talking about to Caribbean countries, Canada, UK, and then to move into rest of the world in the next two years. Another item that we're seeing, dangerous goods. So a dangerous good is anything that has um, an alcohol level over a particular value. And so even if you're, we have two vendors on board who sell perfumes, the most beautiful um, Caribbean, I mean, totally Caribbean when you smell them, products, fantastic, fantastic. But because the alcohol content level is of a certain percentage, they can't be traded easily. And so things like that, if that's going for personal use, if it's a bottle that is an individual bottle being sold, we need to have some uh, conversations where that can be allowed. This third element, easy access to US dollars for small entrepreneurs. Because, and, and of course, across the economy, everybody's crying for this, right? Any person who is manufacturing or producing things that need um, raw materials that need to be purchased abroad has this concern. But I'm trying to stand in the gap for the small and medium-sized entrepreneurs because a lot of their notions and the raw materials for their e-stores are imported. And then they add value to it and transform it into something else. But what we're talking about is that those notions, those buttons, zippers, um, leather, they would need, they need the support there. So today I'm offering a sign-up offer. Um, we have a setup fee that is charged. In fact, I'll tell you in our first uh, startup, we have done about um, our first hundred vendors came on board free of charge, absolutely free of charge. But we do charge a 20% a commission, and that 20% commission allows for our payment gateway transfers. It allows for um, our marketing because we spend quite a bit on marketing in terms of getting the products out there, getting people to see the site, getting people driving traffic. So we do charge a 20% commission, but call me today to sign up if you're interested, if you are eligible, if you are approved, and we can make some very special things happen for you. So we need the encouragement is for you to be, be ready to sell online in no time. You can come on board, take a look, grab off these two links here. Um, the vendor registration link. So just on the Shop Caribbean homepage, just at the top, we have two links, vendor registration and then the vendor FAQs. Lots and lots of questions there, lots and lots of information. Feel free to check it out, but take my number, 310-1608, and you can call me directly, that we can get you set, get you signed up on Shop Caribbean. Thank you so much to my panelists. I think you all are rock stars, right? What you're doing takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of um, energy, day-to-day -day energy, just to, just to keep it all straight with logistics and shipping and um, documentation and payments. Uh, similar to my, my colleagues, everything is online. We pay our, our vendors um, online once a product gets to the to the the customer, three to five working days, money hits your account. You don't have to come and pick up a check anywhere. 
make we're trying to make life very very easy for entrepreneurs entrepreneurs have so many things going on so many things to do that at Trop Caribe, we are here to assist we're here to help and um give me a call thank you very much for that presentation miss Kutras. So we have a few questions. Um, I must say we may not be able to answer all, but I have taken note of them and we will respond via email. I may compile a question and answer list and just send to all the participants. Okay. Um, we have a question here um, for Shakab. How often are pay payouts done to vendors? Hi, uh, payments are done weekly, uh, every Thursday. Uh, we transfer payments online. Uh, so we integrate with your banking system and we transfer payments online. So there's no check payments at the end of the month or anything. Like that. Everything is done online by ACH payments and everything is integrated. So normally what we'll do, we'll send you a bank form um, at the beginning of the registration and you just fill it out, send it back to us and we integrate it with FCB and um, we do transfers weekly, every Thursday every Tuesday and to all the parties to all the panelists there's a question from Mr. Mirage with respect to exporting local food items what about the regulations for certain products how would this be handled um on my end uh we don't ex we don't work with um perishable products um for now because we don't have our own delivery systems and we utilize companies like uh, SPED and UPS, um, we don't do perishable items internationally uh, with DHL as well. So that may not be an option with, um, with Shopper. Okay. Um, From our perspective, um, similarly, perishable items can be a challenge, but we do have um some steps being taken to see how we can work that out particularly things like um wine alcohol you know again it's a dangerous goods element Correct, so we're yeah. working through that you know the the alcohol content levels but we're working through that um we've had talks with dhl in terms of they do provide refrigeration you know products can be refrigerated for dispatch so it's coming it's coming hold on a little bit yeah, and I'll end a little bit on that one. Um, so we have commercial fridges and freezers at our warehouse, and we've also gotten all of our food badges for all of our drivers. So at Planting Seeds, we definitely do the perishables. Um, all of the frozen goods and frozen items are done on dry ice. So that is another um, one. Of course, perishables are always um, challenging, but we've been doing them for a while, and we think we have the formula for it once... Um, I think the warehousing that we have and the commercial chillers and freezers really help us a lot um, with executing those. Okay. And for and me, have... we don't um, we don't export anything at the moment. So it's all just for local distribution. However, we are also equipped with the necessary. Well, as you guys may know, we also transport um, prepared food and stuff like that for restaurants. We have a number of restaurants that have signed up with us. So we have the appropriate cooler bags and we have the like drink coolers, we have the um, refrigerated boxes, et cetera. So that's for grocery products or for um, prepared meals, we can transport it. But this is only for local consumption because we do not export any products at the moment. I don't know if that's what he on, our, on our end, um, we know you, you can imagine how many times international customers would have uh, contacted us to purchase some of our local alcohol, which is a big seller. Um, we do have uh, local wines, local alcohols on our website, and you no, know, well, DHL handles our delivery. And as uh, Roxanne mentioned, it is a dangerous, dangerous uh, goods. So they try to. Uh, I mean, majority of our um, our delivery systems, uh, FedEx, UPS, DHL. Um, all of them is it, considered dangerous goods unless you are doing it ocean freight and obviously it, it'll take much longer um, your costs will go up you know so it's um 
it's it's a little tricky with the perishables and the um, the alcohol. Yeah. Okay. Roxanne, we have a question for you. I saw that one of your partners is Fashion TT. Can you explain the relationship between this entity and Shop Karib? Sure. We have been working with Fashion TT because our folk, one of our focal point areas is fashion. So we have quite a few designers who are on the platform, uh, quite a few of their, so we share stakeholders basically. And um, we also have Fashion TT come on to help us with some of the applications. So they would be able to give us a bit of a vetting, you know, on some of the design, designers who apply to be on Shop Caribe. The intention is, you know, when you're talking about clothing, uh, one of the key things when we did our research, you know, in terms of returns, uh, people found, well, you know, the clothes, maybe it wasn't done properly or it was raw on the inside or the finishings weren't perfect. And so that's where we've been collaborating with Fashion TT to make sure that, you know, the, the vendors that we have on the site um, have gone through some, some quality checks in terms of their, their fashion and the finishing of the work because we want to, we haven't had any returns and that's been phenomenal for us. And so it's critical that we continue to have that kind of high quality um, input. Okay, thank you. And Arthur Lockjack asked, how do you, the Graduate School of Business, how do you manage delivery costs? Shipping items from Trinidad tends to get expensive and many times the cost of shipping far exceeds the cost of the product. So how do you get around that? Or make it competitive and cost effective? On my end, um, because we have a few different delivery companies and the amount of deliveries that we, we, we send through these companies, um, we benefit from economies of scale and we are able to negotiate with them lower prices. Uh, we don't mark up our delivery costs. Whatever discounts we get from the delivery companies, UPS and SPED and, and DHL as well, um, we transfer it to the customer. So all our discounts are passed on to the customer. We don't mark up our deliveries. The only way uh, our commissions are only on the sale of the product. Um, and, and yeah, so that's the only way we, we try to do that. We also have incorporated uh, free delivery, but it is within a longer period. So we try to assist customers with um, free delivery, but what we try to do, it will be within a five to seven day period. And we offer free delivery so that way we can um, collate the products and do a, a mass deliveries on you know certain days in, in certain areas so that that's one way we try to combat the delivery costs so customers do have the option to utilize our standard delivery systems which happens within a 48 day maximum period or they can utilize the free delivery which happens within a five to seven day period i can also speak to that one so all of our deliveries on orders over 75 dollars are free um, I think it was, I think we, we started off our entire platform with free deliveries because that allows the vendors to be able to execute their deliveries without the cost of the products going up. So um, there's one. In terms of the international sales for alcohol, um, we do do it as well, but we use distributors in different countries. So if anybody needs any further information on that, I can provide that as well. And in terms of the deliveries that are going out to different countries in terms of the price of them, yes, it does cost um, to get something to the UK, but we found that all of our UK customers are really, really happy to pay the delivery because the pound is, um, you know, the pound is really high, things are really expensive in the UK. So we don't have that problem at all. We've been finding more of a problem with um, staying price competitive in the US but definitely not the UK. And I think similarly, you know, that, that's an excellent point Stephanie raised there in terms of, you know, the cost of living in other countries is much higher than in Trinidad and Tobago. So when they, we've, we've shipped things like uh, large paintings, you know, and so when they see, okay, maybe I'll pay $50, 50 US in, in um, shipping costs, 
but I got exactly what I wanted, you know, and that is the key thing that people want. The, the life has been changing so much. Um, people's expectations, their worlds have changed so much that now they want to hone in and find those things that are the most special to them. You know, they want to wear that outfit that is just, wow, reminds me of Pigeon Point or they want that, you know, the fashion that reminds them. So I think because of that, people are willing more and more and more so to buy the products from the Caribbean. Okay, and I have a question for all four participant um, panels. Being that you're all in, in, the, in the industry, you have first-hand um, knowledge of what's going on. What would you say is your biggest challenge currently or facing, facing your business? What, what is the biggest challenge? Um, I think that there, obviously, being re realistic, there are a lot of challenges that I know that we face, and I'm sure that the, uh, the other panelists would may share a similar experience. Um, one is that we're not really a cashless. Well, for us in particular, um, I didn't, we took the decision not to accept cash or COD payments because one, it's a risk to the driver for accountability purposes, um, safety, and I figured that it was the sensible thing to do. So we still have a lot of people that I, I remember that based on the data that was available, there was only 16% of the population had access to credit cards. However, um, as you guys would be aware, this has kind of shifted a bit with the introduction of the um, Visa debit card. So now we have an expansion, in the, but, but in terms of the, the readily available data, I don't have access to that in terms of a percentage. Um, so, you know, not being a fully cashless society, that's one point. Secondly, I know that a lot of vendors um, Change is generally very scary for people. I think we have, you know, in Trinidad, luckily people have been able to exist and, and run their businesses in the same way that they have for maybe 10 years or 15 years. However, with the advent of COVID in particular, people have realized that there is a need. So we still have people that I think are hesitant to take that leap or to, to be brave enough, I suppose, to do business in, an, in a non-conventional manner. Um, and apart from that, we also have, I think that people want to know that you are customer service driven, because I mean, I know th that there is a bit of skepticism that people have in terms of, um, you know, of course, when someone is coming to sell you a product or whatever, they say, okay, this is going to be great. It's going to help your business. And then they don't hear from you for the next six months or the next year, whatever the case is. So I know that there is that skepticism that people uh, tend to have when they try in something new. And other than that, um, what else would I say are challenges? I think that sometimes vendors as well, they have their own logistic, you know, like logistic challenges in terms of getting things prepared or being structured or being organized because some people don't even have for example, a point of sale system, or they don't have their stock inventory updated properly. So in their store, they know, okay, I have 10 shirts, so I have 10 pants, whatever the case is, but is it pro properly documented? Is, is there a system in place? So now, well, uh, particularly with our software that we provide to vendors, it kind of forces them to kind of or be a bit more organized, if that makes sense. So I think that sometimes that is a bit, so it, it, we do spend a lot of time training vendors and working with them because um, it's just about, I guess, walking the, the road with um, our partners and that, that's what we're doing. So I, it is a challenge, but I think it's something that is, um, can be worked um, to solve. Anyone? Else? Um, my concern that I've experienced so far is um, one, because of the, the current pandemic that we're in and because of the lockdowns, our delivery times has increased. 
So normally we would have done either same day or next day delivery, but because of the new protocols with um, with the lockdown and curfews and whatnot, one of the things that we're experiencing is that a lot of vendors, they may have increased their processing time in that getting the product ready from their storage because they may not be at their store. So they'll have to come out of their homes and go to their store to get the products, package it, and it may not be same day as the delivery coming. So it may take a little extra day or two to, to get the products out to the, the, the customers um, on time. So that is what we're experiencing right now. So normally we would have done same day or next day, we would have increased it to three to four days. Just give that buffer for you know that processing time with the vendors um, and ensuring you know obviously we do have to include make sure that all our delivery companies which they um, do have their protocols like UPS and SPAN and DHL they already have their systems in place with the the secure the the COVID protocols you know the safeties the masks and whatnot so that is upside with us so we don't have that too much of a concern because they already have things in place. Um, so in terms, yeah, it's more or less the, the processing time on our end so far that we've experienced. Um, yeah. Okay. And a very important question, which um, I think deserves to be answered. Are there any avenues for businesses that offer professional services rather than actual items to purchase? So services. Yeah, so we do services as well. We do products. Uh, once you're able to package your services and whatnot, we can you can upload the services and we you can have a platform with the services. So it's both services, retail and wholesale. So you can do business to business as well, B2B. We do services as well. And we also assist entrepreneurs in terms of marketing the services to our vendor community because it's just it's so large that we're able to now get all of the service people and then bring them together with the vendors as well. In terms of um, in terms of the challenges that we face, I think it's mainly international right now. So we've kind of, um, I mean, we've kind of worked through all of our local deliveries and we have that under control. Um, we had to buy shares in Pink Cab um, in order to expand with the a level that we were doing each day. But in terms of the international advertising for the website, um, we've been costing it out and it does cost a lot of money to do our digital ads in different corners of the um, corners of the globe. So we had to um, siphon down which areas we're going to be going first and it'll obviously be where the diaspora is most um, active and that's what we've been doing. So with the launch of the new site, um, we're doing that in about a week or two, we're going to be actively marketing it, marketing it across the globe and investing a lot of money in that. So raising the money to be able to market the site outside of the Caribbean, um, I think was our biggest, biggest challenge so far. And then we're going to have to, the next challenge we see coming is to make sure that people are ready to um, supply an international market and then obviously we're going to have a challenge with returns. I know Shop Karibi um, has been able to not have those returns and they've been putting a lot of effort into making sure that they don't have those refunds because I think you all you all do a lot of a lot of international as well so um, that's going to be our next our next hurdle that we're going to have to deal with how to um, service the American and Canadian consumers and UK consumers who expect to return a product. I think in terms of challenges, um, that element of that taxation, you know, and I know these discussions that are happening, so that certificate of origin, um, you know, that tax on, on entry, those things we need help with because it, 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 it hampers a process where you're trying to sell an item, you know, that is 50 US and then it gets slapped with a tax of 35 US. I mean, that's, that purchaser, that customer is not going to come back again. So I know these discussions, I think there's a CARICOM meeting coming up soon. And, you know, the, maybe the big ticket items are there, you know, if I'm, I'm manufacturing and I'm, and I'm bringing a container of, you know, goods from the Caribbean, that's that's fine. There, there are discussions happening to help that, you know, the tax levels we manage on that. But when you get to these smaller levels now, we need to have some intercession for 
no taxes to be applied to these things. As long as it is going for, as long as it's not 50 items going for resale, it is, you know, two things as a, as a birthday present, one dress, one something too. We need to be able to have those things looked at and so that they're not charged taxes. Um, we're at a point where world over people want to experience things. They want, you know, things that are now, you know, so um, that they've missed. They haven't been able to get to Trinidad. They haven't been able to get to the Caribbean and they want these products. So there's demand. We now need to make sure that supply is not inhibited in any way. And I think that's why we really need that support with those, the tax regulations, um, the certificate of origin. We've gone through, uh, we've been working with uh, Export TT in getting that for all our, all our vendors. And even that is a costly exercise. It's a cost to each of the vendors. And if we're talking about an MSME or small, uh, SMS, you know, because a lot of the entrepreneurs who will drive this economy are small organizations, they're mom and pop, um, women owned, you know. And so we need to be able to support them in varying ways. And that var the varying ways is, yes, it's not just a, a grant, you give them a certain amount of money, that's fine, that's fine, that will help them once. But you also need to look at what are the sy sy systematic things, the legislative things, the, you know, to allow e-commerce to happen easily to allow a bank to give you an e-commerce account is a challenge. It's a challenge. We, we spend environment. creating that enabling environment, correct? We spend the greater part of a year trying to get our e-commerce account, right? We've gotten it, it's working, fabulous. Yeah, um, I mentioned in my presentation, the role of WePay. Um, I'm, I'm not, this is not an ad, but I'm saying that they were very, very, um, they made it happen easily and quickly for an e-commerce account to be set up. Yes? Okay, thank you. So thank two you. questions and then we'll close. Um, general information for those here. Your sites, they accept the new Visa debit cards? Yes. Yes, okay. QuickBox does accept. No. All major credit cards, American Express, um, MasterCard, Visa, Visa Debit. And, um, you know, we have people that shop from all over the world as well. Like they buy things to send things to. So we, I mean, there have been times as well where um, people may have had like um, card dependence issues. So they would have to call their banks and just let them know that they were making a foreign transaction and that sort of thing. But we do process all cards, including Visa Debits. Yeah, once it's branded Visa or MasterCard, um, debit cards, we, we accept it. Um, we also do PayPal. Um, so like international persons who are shopping uh, prefer to use PayPal to shop on our international site. So yeah, we do mm. offer those options. Thank you. And your platform, do they allow for customer reviews and reviews of products and vendors? Because you know, a lot of times somebody when you shop there, you check the reviews. Yeah. Yeah. Our website, you have um, customer reviews and they can upload uh, the products uh, and put their reviews on, you know, when they purchase, how was the experience, uh, the customer service, um, the actual product itself, you know, so they can put up their customer reviews on the website. Yes. Similarly here. Yes, certainly. I mean, and that's how, that's how people shop now, right? Correct. So yeah. You shop from your reviews. So yeah. yes. We are, you know, it's um, it's one of the hardest things to get people to do. Um, they'll tell you if there was a problem, but to say, hey, that was fantastic, that's always a little challenge. So we've incorporated all sorts of little nifty things to get people to, yes, to respond and give the reviews. But we are, it is capable. Um, I'm seeing someone asking about documentaries and film. Um, it's in, in our planning to come, yes, but we right now we have books, we have um, some audio, audio books, audio CD type things and some actual printed books. So people still believe in printed books. We do, we do virtual products as well. 
Um, so if you have like a software or an ebook or you know um, a game, a downloadable product, we can do a virtual product um, on the website as well. Um, subscription products, if you need to get subscription payments monthly, we can um, accommodate for that too. Um, yeah. And there's a last question for Rowana and Nirvan. Um, okay, so somebody is involved in paintings, drawings, sculptures. Would you be interested in putting a specific category for artisans? Yes. Oh, of course. So, oh, oh, take, take it, Nirvan. You go first. You go first. You go first. Um, so we customize the site daily. So any, I mean, we do have standard categories, but we don't have all. I mean, there are categories we may not have, like, I mean, in case we do, I think we do have some paintings, but if there are, and, and you need an additional category included, we can do that readily. It's, it's very easy to do. And, you know, once the customer identifies, okay, hey, I want one, two, three, four, five different categories included, is a, is a simple process to just include the additional categories for you and create that, um, that, that section. Yeah. Um, yes. So for us, it, actually, we do have we do have um, Peter Shepard as an artist. So he sold a couple um, pieces on QuickBox in particular. I can't think of any other artists, but we uh, sim similar to what um, Ms. Mirage said that we as well, we just want to onboard businesses. It doesn't matter what sector we have from Island Hobbies to Dr. Raj on QuickBox. So for us, it's I know it's it's a I just say that example because it shows the extremity and the wide scope of um products that people can sell on the platform. So there's nothing that once it is legal to sell that we would not consider putting on online. Um so yeah, once you're interested, we would be happy to put sculptures, paintings, anything of that sort. Okay. Well, in closing, I would First, I'd like to thank all the panelists for agreeing to participate. For the participants, I'd like to thank you all for coming on and staying on. And as we at the ministry strive to drive the e-commerce agenda, we, we really look for topics that are relevant and would add value to MSMEs. During our um, our research, we realized a lot of information was lacking. So we, we we really want to provide the knowledge and help support in the environment. So thank you all. Um, could the panelists please stay on? And thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you, Sami. Thanks for having us. Thank you for all the participants who logged in. Hope yes. it was informative. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, um, I guess, um, Simi, you, I mean, I, I saw some questions. There were persons who were asking for our contact information. Um, I'm guessing you will provide that to them? Oh, I will do a post. Uh, there are some questions that were unanswered. So I will do a post, um, post time webinar. Um, sheet will answer the questions and send your contact information and send it out as well as the presentation this webinar will be on our website so people just can go back and yes thank yeah. you yeah, I hope everyone stay safe yes mm. uh, it's, it's, it's okay. you, know, you need to lock down and keep everything safe this time correct yeah. okay thank you thank you to to me and the Honourable Minister and to the other panellists, this is very, very informative. And of course, to the participants, who I think have been very patient. We all spoke a lot, so. Yeah, and I think, I think we, you know, all the panellists, we can get together and uh, work together and see how we can, uh, you know, increase the information Correct. getting out to the public to let them know, okay, this is available. So I think um, so we can do a collaborative effort. To get sure. that information out there with you know four yes, of us and also the yeah. And yeah. I think your comment, Rowana, your comment about you know people being on multiple sites. Yep. That is so important, you know. It, right. it is and that and, and your point about the Google Analytics, you know, yep. that crawl that web crawling is an insidious thing. It is central. Yeah. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. And so people need to kind of work it into their brain 
it's not just one site I need to be on it, or it's Correct. not just I can be on all it's not just my own Correct. website. Yeah, that's fabulous. Correct. But people Correct. need to be able to find you at multiple opportunities. I mean, and there's no downside to it. You benefit either way. You're getting revenue stream from all the different platforms. So yeah, try yeah. all. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I I actually had met um someone who was in charge of e-commerce for JD Sports. So JD Sports is a international sneakers. Uh, brand I mean they have a big presence in the UK in particular and they were advising me that um, some of their biggest sales actually come from platforms um, not from their website in particular but from selling things on for example Amazon and, and, and other third-party sites so at the end of the day yeah I agree that people should be encouraged to use as much um, ecosystems like this as possible to get their products out correct yeah it increases your target market. That that's Correct. the end of thing. It, it you you can reach a worldwide platform. You don't have to be confined to just Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, you Correct. can reach regionally. You can reach internationally. Um, and, and there's no downside to it. 